Joker was undoubtedly one of the most authentic watershed cultural moments of the last ten years. Which, given how saturated in vapid banality our culture has become, those moments are few and far between. There are very few movies that stay with you, but Joker's claustrophobic nihilism clings on like nothing else. But how do we know for sure that it was so good? Because all the right people hated it. The Guardian, Slate, The Wall Street Journal. This Guardian Easter implored people to ditch Joker and instead see a movie that was literally about how to become an incel. Before the movie's release, we were bombarded with relentless hysteria about how it was going to cause mass shootings. How it was irresponsible. How we needed cops at theatres to keep us safe. Why was the establishment so afraid of this movie? Why did they try to actively discourage people from seeing it? Because Joker points a finger at the true reason why our society produces the diseased minds responsible for mass shootings. Because our entire culture is bathed in atomizing, consumerist, celebrity at all costs nihilism. Because the way we've been brainwashed into living and consuming creates a breeding ground for loneliness, despair and mental illness. Because we've been taught that people who think differently are a danger to society. And that they must be ostracized, bullied and censored into silence. Because we've castigated an entire generation of young men that they're worthless incels who deserve nothing but contempt. Who's responsible for all that? The media. Silicon Valley, puritanical woke outrage mobs. The movie holds up a mirror to how a society that humiliates, shames and disenfranchises people is itself responsible for generating violence. Joker's murder of the talk show host is literally motivated by him being humiliated and cancel cultured by the media. So is it any wonder that the same forces responsible for doing exactly that in our society hate this movie? So this movie is its such a hard one where I cried three times during the course of it. I don't believe you've ever cried in your life. As TJ Kirk writes, this film is being treated as dangerous by the media and by the powers that be, not only because they're afraid it will inspire violence, but because it challenges their narrative about why violence happens in the first place. It challenges the cartoonish notion that every mass shooter is just a random sicko with a gun who snapped, or even more idiotically, was just born evil. Joker makes an explicit connection between mental illness and violence. Here's why that's dangerous and wrong. Because it doesn't fit with our partisan agenda to blame mass shootings on gun ownership. See, they don't want you talking about how mental illness leads to violence because they're responsible for exacerbating mental illness. Big Pharma, Silicon Valley, the rage bait media. Is it just me? Or is it getting crazier out there? They also tried to put people off from seeing this movie by terrifying us about how violent it was. That's rich, isn't it? The same news networks that plaster the names, faces and manifestos of mass shooters across the world while the bodies are still warm, inspiring copycat attacks, are blaming a comic book movie about a clown for mass shootings. And anyway, it's not even that violent. Yeah, there are like three brutal murders. But one of the biggest movies of the year, John Wick 3, was literally literally just two hours of straight violence and nobody got their panties in a bunch over that. There was no moral panic. There were no cops posted outside theatres in case Keanu Reeves radicalised anyone to go postal. Good to see you too. And unlike many movies that pander to wokeness in return for artificially inflated critic reviews, Joker didn't subject us to that. And that's also what makes them mad. They crave the power, which allows them to disincentivize people from making movies which don't even deviate from the progressive consensus, but merely refuse to worship its sacred cows. They're engaged in a cultural revolution to cleanse the entertainment industry of anything that doesn't regurgitate their dogma. That's why there's a significant gap between the critic score and the audience score. Bear in mind, these are the same critics who gave Hustlers some god-awful feminist cringe fest a better review score than Joker. Joker, an absolute masterpiece and one of the best films of the 21st century, gets 69%. Hustlers, some slut fest dressed up as a tawdry, moralizing girl power flick, gets 88%. How out of touch are these people going to get? 
before we stop listening to them. Take the recent Dave Chappelle special. The difference between the critic score and the audience score was 35% to 99%. Merely because Chappelle made fun of LGBT people once during the entire show. Any deviation from the dogma, any hint of dissent, and the transgressor must be punished as a message to others. The critics' knives were out as soon as Joker director Todd Phillips dared engage in the wrong thing of asserting that woke outrage culture has killed comedy. He also previously suggested that people realising the system was rigged created the environment that allowed Trump to be elected. And for that reason alone, for not genuflecting to the cult of political correctness. Numerous lefty reviewers probably walked into the cinema with a stick up their butt and their minds already made up. According to a CNN op-ed, Joker was racist. It's an insidious validation of the white male resentment that helped bring President Donald Trump to power. Bullshit. Whatever politics form the backdrop to the movie, a left wing. It's an anti-capitalist thing. But the Joker character himself repeatedly emphasizes how his motivations are not political. All of the people he murders are white and his love interest is a black single mom. Oh my god, so racist. But how revealing is it that the mere existence of a character, a mere analysis of the struggles of a mentally ill poor white man, is enough to prompt accusations of racism? That's why they hate this movie. God forbid could the existential angst of a white male be allowed to be represented in 2019. They also hate the Joker because it riffed on one of the more viral recent memes. Clown world. This idea that the only rational reaction to the increasing insanity that identity politics and political correctness has wrought on the world is to don a clown mask and honk a horn. <laughs> The media, of course, savaged this meme as another dog whistle for white supremacists and deadly incels. For me, the Joker's erratic yet strangely satisfying dance moves were kind of a cathartic realisation and embracement of the whole clown world meme. The casting of Robert De Niro as the smug talk show host was also a stroke of genius because as this tweeter points out, the actor himself has more or less become the condescending, self-righteous and elitist entertainment industry archetype who much of the working class has come to loathe over the last 20 years. As John Daniel Davidson points out, the movie also emphasizes how maybe the thing people need most in life is friendship and love and community. Maybe we need to rethink the way we've torn down the institutions and traditions that used to support these things. Maybe the radical atomization and isolation and autonomy of modern life doesn't foster prosperity and happiness. Maybe we need to start taking these things seriously. If we do, that will mean rethinking a half century of progressive thought and questioning whether it has all been a pack of lies. And maybe that's the real reason woke media hate Joker. As we can glean from his rant during his appearance on the talk show near the end of the film, one of Joker's main gripes is the breakdown of civility in society. He just wants people to be nicer to each other. Ask yourself this. Does a media establishment whose very existence is dependent on maintaining an endless cycle of rage bait, a torrential shit show of feigned outrage and partisan bickering, a drab deluge of hollow, meaningless plastic culture that shows nothing but vicious hostility to anything or anyone trying to express authenticity, really want a message that exposes all of that to be heard. <laughs> My voice is being silenced by free speech hating Silicon Valley giants who want me disappeared forever. It's absolutely crucial that you support me by donating at Subscribestar. It's also vital that you sign up for my free newsletter at summit.news forward slash newsletter so we never lose contact. And please support my sponsor TurboForce, the powerful new energy drink without the come down. Link in description.